Hi, welcome to the Well-Rounded Mama YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Servillo, and I'm one of the midwives here at the Well-Rounded Mama Maternity Center in Las Vegas. I'm also the class instructor for the fertility workshop here. So today I wanted to go over some of the testing that some people might be interested in to see how fertile they are, to see if they are in good health, for having a baby and kind of what the steps are towards going to a fertility specialist. And at what point do you really need to consult one? Just to kind of start us off, I wanted to go over three series of lab tests that I think are really important when you are talking about conceiving. So when I say fertility, I mean your ability to conceive and then carry a pregnancy to term. The first pregnancy test, or I should say the first lab test that I would really recommend that you do before conceiving, so prior to ever getting pregnant, is a general health workup. Usually what a midwife will do, or a primary care physician, or sometimes an OBGYN, whatever care provider you choose to do some of these testings for you, it's a good idea to get like an overall picture of your health. So usually what we'll do is like a general CBC that lets us know if you have any like iron deficiencies or something like that. I also recommend that you get a thyroid panel done. Sometimes that can affect your cycles and your fertility. I also like doing a vitamin D panel just to see if you might be deficient for vitamin D. Vitamin D is really important when you conceive and especially during your pregnancy. Uh, for bone health and all of those things. So vitamin D is very, very important. And something that not a lot of people think about is also STIs. I would really recommend prior to getting pregnant that you get a gonorrhea and chlamydia test done. And the reason why is because sometimes people are totally asymptomatic and they have no idea. If you are positive for gonorrhea or chlamydia, it can actually affect your fertility quite a bit. And it can, you know, cause problems during your pregnancy. It's totally easy to treat. You just get antibiotics. It's super simple to take care of. So it never hurts to get a ST eye screening specifically for chlamydia and gonorrhea. Once you do that, if you find that you're having a little bit of trouble conceiving, there are a series of tests that we usually recommend to see what the problem might be. First, to kind of talk about what I see a lot on the internet, if you googled fertility testing, there are a ton of home tests. The reason why I don't love those is because it doesn't give you a really good picture of overall what's happening. I really think it does you a disservice to not have some sort of care provider that can help you interpret these results because sometimes they'll give you a result of, yeah, you have a high egg count or maybe you have a low egg count based off of whatever testing you got done, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you won't conceive or that you will have problems conceiving. So it just doesn't give you like an overall Overall, great picture. If you get to the point where you do want some sort of fertility testing, there's a couple things that we can do. Really easy lab draws that we can do. First, there is a test called cycle day three testing. So what that means is the third day of your cycle. So anytime you're doing like cycle tracking or testing, we're going from the first day of your last menstrual period. So literally day three of your period is when we would do this test. On day three of your period, we do a simple lab draw and that tells us your FSH, your LH and your E2, so your estrogen. What those things tell us is during that part in your cycle, you should have some elevations and if we don't see those, then that can indicate certain things. So when we do like a cycle day three and a cycle day 21 test, which I'll talk about in just a second, based off of those, we can find out if you might have some sort of hormonal problem like PCOS. Those are the tools that we use in order to diagnose that. After that one, you can do a cycle day 21 test. Here's my little spiel about the cycle day 21. Just like I mentioned for the three day, we are talking about from the first day of your last menstrual cycle, doing that 21 days later. However, tracking your cycle is gonna be so important for any sort of fertility testing. It's important to know how long your cycles actually are. So even though we say it's on day 21, 
we're actually talking about seven days before you expect to have your period. So you could have a cycle anywhere from 21 to 35 days. You might not have like a textbook 28 day cycle. And if you don't, that could be a big reason why you might not be able to conceive or have been having trouble conceiving because maybe you're making love on the wrong days. So when we say day 21, we actually mean seven days prior to your next period. When we take that test on day 21, it's telling us after you ovulate, you should get a surge of progesterone. That can tell us if you have actually ovulated. Obviously, if you are trying to conceive, you need to ovulate in order for you to actually conceive. So if there has been some difficulty, that's when we might do like a day three or a day 21 test to make sure you are ovulating, to make sure that you have those hormones present that are supposed to be present. And if they're not, or if they're quite high in certain areas, that can help us diagnose something like PCOS. And then we can help you with a plan to figure out what you should do next. Before you really go much further into like x-rays and consulting a specialist and Sometimes they'll do ultrasound. There are several more invasive tests that we can do to check female reproduction for fertility checks in that direction. But really at that point, I would encourage you to do a semen analysis. Semen analysis is a much less invasive and cheaper alternative to just see if there might be some problems in a different area than just the female body. It's just a really quick check. It's an easy thing to do towards the beginning of your fertility journey. If you notice that it has been about a year after you have been charting your cycle, trying those fertility foods that we mentioned, after you've been doing several of these things, I do recommend that you start to consult a fertility specialist. Another thing that a lot of people don't consider is that there is such a thing as a fertility doula. If you are thinking about going on IVF or IUI or surrogacy, doulas can be a fantastic person to help coach you and walk you through that process. Someone that just has like a little bit more time to actually sit with you and explain what's going on. Also the emotional aspects of all of this. So I would really encourage you to look up your local fertility doulas. And if you can't find one locally, a lot of people are doing things by FaceTime or Zoom these days. So there's certainly other ways that you can contact a fertility doula and still get that one-on-one -on -one support to help you through that process. I hope that that was valuable. If you liked that video, go ahead and like, and please subscribe, ring the bell if you want to get notifications whenever we post a new video. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a lovely January.